Welcome back everyone. This is our final lecture on PLC hardware components. We talked about several sections of the PLC, the CPU, we did an overview of the PLC. Today what we want to do is talk about the input output modules. There are basically two types of input output modules. There's discrete and analog. And in the beginning here, we first want to talk about the discrete type of I.O. module. So discrete means you have separate or independent values. So you can have one value or another. Discrete types of I.O. modules use input devices that are what we say are of an on-off nature. So, for example, I can have a switch. A switch can be on or off. Um, I can have any any device that can be considered to be in one state or another state could be a candidate for discrete I.O. On the PowerPoint here, notice this term bit oriented. Bit oriented. Now, I've mentioned in other videos that when we access digital information, the smallest piece of information normally that we can access is 8 bits. 8 bits is called a byte. So typically when you represent information, say you the, the letter A from your keyboard or a number from the keyboard, uh, usually that's, we use 8 bits to represent that information. We use one byte. The PLC is one of the few machines that, that's actually bit oriented, meaning the smallest piece of information it can access is an actual bit. And where that's done is if I want to represent the uh, position of a switch, maybe a switch being open, I would have a bit set to 1. Or if a switch is closed, I would have it set to 0. Or probably vice versa would be a better way. If I have a switch that's closed, I can set it to a 1. If I have a switch that's open, I can set it to a 0. Either way, you can see that we're using things that are of, of one state or another state. So typically, devices like that, switches and so forth, that can be considered to be in one state or another state is used in this type of I.O. What do input modules do? What, what are the tasks of input modules? Well, here's a list, and I'll go through some of these. Uh, the major task or the main task is to sense when the signal is received from a sensor or a switch. So basically, uh, a switch is open or closed. We're going to send a signal to the module. If a sensor has an output or doesn't have an output, or has a, a, an output that is at one level or uh, another level if we're using two-state electronics, that, that signal is sent to the input module. The input module will then take the signal and convert it to the correct voltage for the particular type of PLC in use. That's part of the signal processing we talked about in the other video. Uh, the other task is to isolate the PLC from voltage current fluctuations. That's called filtering. And then this last one is actually pretty important to identify to the processor which sensor the, the uh, which sensor originated the signal. Now that process of doing that is called addressing. We mentioned that a little bit in a previous discussion, but we'll get into that. When you guys get your simulation software, you'll see how addressing takes place. But I talked about in the last video mapping a screw terminal to a bit position in the input or output image table and that's done through addressing. This next slide is pretty important. Uh, this will at some point you will see this on the quiz or exam so if you're taking notes uh, go ahead and mark this slide for exam or quiz. Output module classification. So there's three ways to classify the output module. These are actual devices. These are physical devices. So the first one is a transistor. The second is called triac. And the third, we've talked a little bit about, is called a relay. So let's start with the transistor. A transistor is a semiconductor device. It's a solid state device, which means it has no moving parts. Transistors are used to control DC. So if your output module is a transistor output module, then the thing that it controls must be DC. A triac, you can think of a triac as the AC version of the transistor. Although it is not a transistor, it's really a switch. 
it's still solid state like the transistor, no moving parts, but it's used to control AC devices. And then the relay, we went over relays in, 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 in detail on several other discussions, so I won't say too much about it, but just know that I can use a relay to turn off or on either AC or DC devices. So you want to know the name, transistor, triac, and relay. You also want to know and understand what these uh, type of devices are able to control. Transistors can, can control DC only, triac controls AC only, a relay control, can control either AC or DC. The other thing that's important to note about just in general uh, modules, discrete modules, is whether that module sources current or sinks current. So a source or a sink is a, it's really an electrical term. So let's explain the difference between a source or a sink. It's pretty simple. If you have a device and let's say you connect something to the device, if current flows out of the module into the device that you can connect, that you connect, then we say that that module sources current. So if current flows out of the module to power something else, it's a source of current. If you hook power up to the device you want to connect up and hook the other end of it up to the, to the, to the module, then that means power flows from the power source through the device you're connecting up into the input module. And at that point, we say the input module is a sink. So it's pretty, actually pretty simple. All you got to do is look at the module and see which way current flows. If it provides power to something that you hook up, we call that a current source. If I have to hook up power to the thing I want to hook up and hook the other end of it to the um, module so that current flows from the power source through the device I want to hook up into the module, then we call that a sink. If current flows into the, the, uh, the module, it's a sink. So the term source and sink, you want to make sure you're clear on. Now, if uh, my explanation, if that's not clear, then when uh, we do our next video, our live video session, please uh, mark it and remember to, uh, to ask me about that. And I can show you a diagram that makes it really simple. I want to move on now to analog type of I.O., Analog, uh, as you know from our discussion, our first week discussion, most of the quantities that you measure are going to be analog. Well, not all. I mean, if you have a switch hooked to a door and you want to monitor whether the door is open or closed, that switch is going to be open or closed. And in that case, we can use discrete I.O. But if I want to monitor some process, like maybe something that's controlled by temperature or pressure, or sound or uh, the intensity of light any of those things are going to be analog and require that analog signal to be converted to digital remember any machine any digital device any machine requires the current the uh, signal to be digital and so if I have analog quantities that I want to send to a digital machine I have to undergo this process of what we call analog to digital conversion and so this slide, this slide kind of shows you kind of from a, 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 a functional diagram, we'll call the functional diagram, of an analog input module. So I have this field device. Remember, the field is anything that's not inside the PLC. So any hardware that we connect to the PLC, we call that the field device. So we have some kind of field device, maybe a sensor. And here is the input module. And inside the input module is this ADC that stands for analog to digital converter. We have to go from analog to digital. Now, during our first week of class, we had a discussion about analog and digital. And we talked about one way of sampling points and uh, recording codes. We mentioned the fact that when you digitize something, it's a process. And so this is kind of puts another spin on that. If I have uh, analog signal that I want to input into any digital device, specifically a PLC, then that analog first has to be converted to digital. So the first, the front end of this module is going to be an ADC. 
and then once I do that conversion from analog to digital now I'm able to to basically to talk to the PLC circuit circuitry directly because it understands machine language or binary here's some basic transducers there are many many other types so this is a limited list here these are probably the main ones that you'll see or use but as I said in uh, the other uh, video the last video there's basically a sensor or transducer for every sense of the body that you have so anything you can sense there's some kind of sensor that will mimic will mimic that so we have temperature sensors light sensors sensors that can sense speed pressure position and the list goes on and on and on and on but the point is that these are all analog sensors or transducers so using this I could not use this with discrete IO this would have to be used with an analog input module or output module and if I'm using analog then that means that I'm gonna have a conversion process taking place well let's talk a little bit more about an example here's an ADC example and here we have a thermocouple a thermocouple and this thermocouple what it does is it uh, you, you put a temperature into this thermocouple and you get a voltage out and here's the transfer function for it temperature in voltage out and so this transfer function is we made it easy it's linear so uh, basically what this does is it converts a temperature to a voltage a temperature to a voltage a temperature to a voltage here I have a we can kinda of look at this another way this graph here shows a this is called quantizing when you take a, 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 a transfer function or signal you take a signal and this really isn't drawn correctly this staircase looking thing here the points of what looks like staircase the staircase should actually be should actually put a dot here and here and here looks like this is kind of kind of got off here when I was doing the uh, slide but you can imagine that I would have a point here 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 those are samples so what I do is I take the red signal and I sample them at regular intervals and that's called that's called quantizing I give every, I give I assign a digital code to a voltage value or a voltage value to a digital code so now I have information stored in that digital code um, this term resolution we talked about before but you want to make sure you're clear on what that means notice the sample size I sample here I sample here I sample here I sample here I sample in these points and if I were to look at just the samples in the graph I'd have a graph with with a few points on it I would have one two three four five six maybe seven sample points any information between say this point and this point is basically thrown away what re resolution does for us if I want to move to a higher resolution then what I would do is I would sample more often so maybe I'll take twice the number of samples or maybe three or four times the number of samples but remember that every point that I get when I sample the when I sample a signal every point that I get is converted to or stored to a digital code so there's this trade-off that the more samples I take, the more code I have to store, and the more code I have to move around in the circuitry. So there's this trade-off. But you can see the process, the whole process here. So I have this, this analog value, temperature is analog. I send it to a, to a thermocouple, so I'm taking basically temperature in, and I'm getting voltage out. And then what this ADC will do is to take that voltage and it will actually output a digital code so it makes me think that this graph should be reversed I probably want voltage here as the independent variable and the digital code as uh, the dependent variable but I think that you get the idea here we can look at the entire process so now I have this picture if you can understand my picture I have this this tank 
and this tank has a level sensor on it so I can go from this level you can see that that is actually analog not discrete so I can go continuously I can this level will rise up to some maximum value I have a fill valve here that can open and close and let the fluid flow into the tank and over here uh, I have the PLC and then here they talk about the ADC process ADC is analog to digital conversion and then uh, we can go the other way. I can go from digital to analog, which is, a, which is an interesting process. So the complete process, I have an analog signal in, the level sensor, outputs a voltage. The voltage goes into the ADC, analog to digital converter. At this point, I have digital information. This data process which that can mean a, a lot but basically your program and whatever else you do to the information from the ADC here we're going the other way once our data our information is processed we're gonna we're gonna go from a digital this is the digital to analog converter we're gonna take it back from digital to analog because the output device the actuator in this case it is an analog it, it is an analog device so it would need an analog signal so we can go both ways with this conversion process. We can go from analog to digital or digital to analog. In some cases, in the process of controlling some kind of device, you may actually have to go both ways. Take it from analog to digital and then vice versa, depending on what your what output device you're controlling. If this d device were not analog, if it were something like a motor that it was either on or off, then you would need this stage here you would need to go from uh, digital back to analog. So hopefully this example makes sense. If not, please ask me questions when we get to a live session. Well, that's it for today. This uh, video is pretty short. Um, as with the other video, there are some documents that I will not go over, but you are responsible for. So uh, I'm going to put up some documents as both uh, a Word document and a... Um, a PDF and the one that um, goes with this one we'll, we'll put up a memory types document specification document and uh, there'll be another one on special modules so those will all be in module 2 on the website I will not talk about those but on the exam exam number one you are responsible for the material that will be on those documents so make sure you look at those if you have any issues questions or comments about the documents or any of the powerpoints that we went over please let me know and i'll uh, set aside some time to meet with you either by video by phone email or whatever uh, works for you guys have a good one and i'll see you next time